Welcome to episode 7 of this DP Animation Maker series. Today I will show you how to animate a cartoon style fantasy windmill landscape. We will animate the mill, the water, moving clouds, and share more animation tips. So stick around. I used AI to generate this landscape image. Then with Photoshop I split the image into layers. I have one for the sky, one for the clouds, one for the middle part of the landscape, the mill blade, which I want to keep separate because it will spin, and then the foreground to add more dimension. I used some in-painting and generative fill to recreate the missing parts on each layer. I saved the background as a JPG image, and the rest are in PNG format with transparent backgrounds. Now, let's build our ambience. Open DP Animation Maker, click on Change Background, and select the Sky Background. I will add the resources to the Discord server so you can download them for free. Then, go to Animated Objects and select Flicker Flare 2. Click Apply Animation and close the window. We can move it over the sun and increase its size to add some animation to the sun so it's not too static. Then, we can go to Import, click Open Image, and select the clouds. After that, click Continue, and from the animation template, select image scrolling because we want the clouds to scroll across the sky. Click finish import and let's see how we can adjust the animation. You need to go to the effects list and you'll see it has a spinning effect applied to it. Let's change its properties. We can adjust the direction of the animation so it goes from right to left and then we can modify the speed since the clouds aren't moving too fast. A value of one should work well in this case. Next, Let's import another image, this time the middle part representing the landscape. This time I don't want an animation, so I will select Still Object, then click Finish Import. As you can see, now the clouds move behind the landscape because we added the image on top of the clouds, which makes it more interesting when things overlap. Let's add an animated brush this time and select the water brush since we have water in the scene. Now I can paint over the water and it will start to move. However, we run into a problem. By default, it paints over the background, which in our case is the orange sky. So we need to change some settings. Go to Properties and change the Apply Animation setting from Background Only to Whole Scene. Now you can see the water starts moving. I will paint over the entire water and I will speed up the video from time to time. You can play with the settings for the water, adjust the brush, Paint the smaller parts and make sure it doesn't touch the ground or other objects. If it does, you can use the eraser to remove those parts. You can also change settings like speed, amplitude, and scale until it fits your scene. Usually, things that are closer to the camera move faster, while things farther away move slower. Go to Import again and let's open another image, this time the blade image. For this to work, make sure the center of the blade is in the center of the image. This is important because we don't have an option to move the pivot point, so the image will rotate around the center. A front view works best with the image centered. For the animation template, choose Rotating Object, then click Finish Import. Now I will move it on top of the mill so it looks like it belongs there. At first, I thought this control affected the speed, but that controls the frame animation speed. Since there is nothing in the effects list, the setting we actually need to change is the spin setting. As you remember, you can type values larger than the slider allows. You can also change the direction of the rotation. After thinking for a moment, I realize the clouds are moving from right to left. So the blade rotation would make more sense going counterclockwise. I will also reduce the speed to make it look more relaxing to watch. Next, let's add another animated object, this time maybe some magic dust like version 3. From the motion properties, I want the particles to move in the same direction as the wind, so I'll change the direction. For the color, that green is too intense, so I'll swap it with a color that fits better with the scene, like a pink color. Then, you can adjust the number of particles by changing the count, and you can also play with the size. Of course, you can adjust the speed if you want the particles to move slower or faster. What I like to do is create a duplicate of that magic dust, so I can create the illusion that some particles are closer to the camera. I'll add about three particles that are bigger and move a little faster since they are closer to the camera. Next, let's go to import again, and this time let's open the last image, the one with the foreground. 
For the animation template, select Still Object and finish importing. It already looks better. I like how the windmill blades move behind the tree, giving the scene a nice sense of dimension. Right now, the big magic dust particles are behind the tree, so I'll use the up arrow to move them above, so the particles go on top of the tree rather than behind. Now, the big particles are on top, and the smaller ones are behind the tree. I always forget to save the project, so let's do that real quick. Now, let's add another animated object, maybe a butterfly. I think this white butterfly could work. If we go to Boundaries Properties and use the mouse wheel to make it a little smaller, we can adjust the area where the butterfly will fly. I want it to fly only in the bottom area where the flowers are. Right now we have three butterflies, but I'll leave only two. Then I'll duplicate the butterfly layer, change the count to one, and make the size smaller to suggest it's a little farther away. I'll move it behind the foreground layer so we have the single butterfly flying behind and the two butterflies flying closer to the camera. You can export the animation in different formats. I like to use the MP4 format. For this project, I used a 2K size and a duration of two minutes. And here's how the final project looks like. As you can see with DP Animation Maker, we can create all kinds of animation and ambience-like projects. And with AI, we can generate all kinds of images. All you need is a little Photoshop skill to split the image into layers. I use the same method to create this ambience for my Altflux YouTube channel. You can check out more of my experiments there. As you can see, instead of a mill with blades, I have this device that looks like a fan with blades moving. I also added a few smaller ones in the distance. To make the snow look more realistic, I just added a video snow overlay in CapCut. For the flying spaceship that appears from time to time, I used the same method I used in episode 5 with the flying bird. It just flies along a path I defined. That's all for today. I hope you found something useful. Let me know if you want to see more DP Animation Maker videos. I've noticed these tutorials aren't as popular as the AI videos I do, but if enough people want them, I'll continue the series. Leave a comment and a like to support the channel. Thank you, and don't forget to check the Discord channel for resources. Have a great day.